summer is right around the corner and what better way to start it than with a nice text effect. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years and in this Envato Task Plus tutorial I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this sand text effect using Adobe Illustrator. To complete this design you'll need this Wonder Boys font from Envato Elements so make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts and many more all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu, set the width to 850 and the height to 400 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 150 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Start by pressing Ctrl and minus to zoom out a bit. Then go to window in the menu bar and first of all make sure that the control panel is active and then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Simply click on your design area and let's create a 970 by 500 pixels shape. Select the stroke and remove the color. Select the fill and replace this color with 248. 233 and 194. Now move to the control panel and first of all make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and then click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Having the rectangle tool still active, let's click again to create a new shape. Just lower the height to 50 pixels and click OK to create this rectangle. Replace the fill color with 198. 142 and 91. Now use the selection tool to select both of these shapes. Click this larger rectangle to make it the reference shape. And just click these two buttons to easily align your smaller rectangle with the bottom edge of the larger rectangle. Make sure that you're keeping both of these shapes selected and let's create a simple blend. First you need to go to Object, Blend and Blend Options. Select specified steps from this drop down menu and set the value to 8. Click OK and then in order to create the blend you need to go to object, blend and make. Let's expand this blend by going to object and expand. Keep both of these boxes checked and click OK. You'll end up with a new group which you need to ungroup so press shift ctrl and G. And then reselect your smallest rectangle. Select the fill and go to Effect, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to only 2 pixels. And now you need to apply this same Gaussian Blur effect for the rest of the rectangles. So let's move to the next rectangle. Make sure that the fill is selected and go to Effect and apply Gaussian Blur. Or much easier, you can use the Shift, Ctrl and E keyboard shortcut. So let's continue with the next rectangle. Again, make sure that the fill is selected and press Shift, Ctrl and E. And then repeat the same technique for the rest of the shapes. Once you're done, you need to reselect all of your shapes and select the stroke. Increase the weight to 10 points and keep the color set to black. Open the stroke flyout panel and just select profile number one from this list. And then go again to effect, blur and Gaussian blur. This time you need to increase the radius to 30 pixels. Click OK to apply this first effect and go again to effect, distort and transform and transform. All you have to do is drag this move vertical slider to 15 pixels, which will move your stroke 15 pixels down. Click OK to apply the second effect. Return to the appearance panel to lower the opacity of this black stroke to 80% and also change the blending mode to overlay. And now you'll need to duplicate this stroke. 
As you can see, this can't be done when you have all rectangles selected. So again, you'll need to select each rectangle one by one. Make sure that the stroke is selected and click this button to duplicate the selected stroke. Let's repeat the same technique for the rest of the rectangles. And when you're done, you need to reselect all of your shapes. Make sure that the top stroke is selected. And let's make some adjustments. Lower the weight to 5 points and replace the black with a linear gradient. Select this gradient slider and remember to hold down the Alt key to replace the existing color with white. Also lower the opacity of this gradient slider to 0%. And then return to the appearance panel to increase the opacity of the stroke back to 100%. Change the blending mode to normal. And finally, you'll need to adjust the already applied effects. Start with the blur and lower the radius to 20 pixels. And then continue with the transform effect. Set the move vertical slider to minus 15, which will move your stroke 15 pixels up. Click OK to apply this new effect and let's select the path section from the top of the appearance panel to make sure that the effect which you're about to apply will affect the entire path, not just a fill or a stroke. So let's go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Zigzag. Check these two boxes. Set the size to 25. and the number of ridges per segment to only three and then you can click ok to apply this effect next you need to select just this rectangle the one that has a height of 400 pixels go to effect warp and flag make sure that you have this horizontal box checked and set the bend to minus 20 percent and then you can click OK to apply the effect. Let's continue with the 300 pixels high rectangle. Select it and go again to Effect, Warp and Flag. This time set the bend to 15%. Click OK and continue with the 250 pixels high rectangle. Again go to Effect, Warp and Flag. For this effect, you'll need to set the bench to only minus 5%. Click OK. And finally, select the 150 pixels high rectangle. And go one more time to Effect, Warp, and Flag. Let's increase the bench to 40%. Click OK to apply this effect. And reselect the rectangle tool to create an 870 by 420 pixels shape. Let's center this new rectangle. Select the stroke and remove the color. Select the fill and replace it with black. Lower the opacity of this fill to 50% and change the blending mode to soft light. And then go to Effect, Artistic and Film Grain. Drag the sliders to 20, 0 and 10. Click OK to apply this effect. And return to the appearance panel to add a second fill using this button. Keep it selected. And first of all, replace the color with 60, 36 and 21. Lower the opacity to 25% and change the blending mode to soft light. And then go again to effect and artistic, but this time select sponge. Let's drag these sliders to 0, 0, and 15. Click OK to apply this effect and return to the appearance panel to add one more fill using this same button. Keep it selected and for the beginning, let's replace the flat color with a more complex linear gradient. Select this gradient slider and drag it to 75%. Now hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of this gradient slider to 
drag one more copy and move it all the way to zero and then drag a copy of this gradient slider and let's move it to 25 percent remember to set the angle of this gradient to 25 degrees and then move back to the appearance panel first you need to change the blending mode of this gradient to soft light and then go to effect sketch and reticulation drag these sliders to 15 0 and 0 click ok to apply this first effect make sure that your top fill is still selected and go one more time to effect but this time select brush strokes and angle strokes for this effect you need to drag the sliders to 50 15 and 0 click ok to apply the second effect and now that you've got this entire sand design let's select all of these shapes and press ctrl g to group them and then press ctrl c and ctrl f to add a copy of your group in front keep it selected and hold down the shift key as you rotate this group 180 degrees like this now that you've got this flipped copy let's continue with the text so select the type tool from your toolbar Let's hold down the control key and click outside the selection to deselect those shapes and get access to the text settings in the control panel. Just select that Wonder Boys font which you got from Envato Elements. Increase the size to 190 and simply click on your artboard to type in summer. Press the escape key when you're done. Replace the text color with white. Let's use again these two buttons to easily move your text in the center of the artboard. Remember to press Ctrl and C to copy this text because you need two copies in the next minutes. Now hold down the shift key to select this white text along with your flipped group. Move to the transparency panel and just click this make mask button which will mask your flipped group. You can also go to the layers panel and lock both of these groups to make sure that you will not select or move them by accident. And before we continue with the rest of the design, you need to create your own scatter brush. Start by selecting the ellipse tool from your toolbar. Use it to create a 10 pixel circle and fill it with black. Keep this shape selected and let's move to the brushes panel. First of all, let's quickly clean up this panel by going to select all unused. This will select all of your unused brushes and now you can easily remove them using this button. And now having the circle selected, let's save it as a scatter brush using this button. Select random from these drop down menus. Make the size range between 20 and 50%. The spacing should go between 50 and 150 and the scatter should range between 0 and 100%. Remember to also select tints from this drop down menu which will allow you to change the color of the brush after you apply it. And then you can click OK to save your brush inside the brushes panel. Now that you've got your brush feel free to remove this circle from your design. And then press Ctrl and F to add a copy of this white text. Let's remove the white color, add a new fill for your text using this button. Select this fill and first of all replace the color with 198, 142 and 91. And then go to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. You need to change the blend mode to Overlay. Lower the opacity to 40%, set the offset values to 8 and 16, also increase the blur to 16 and make sure that the color is set to black and then you can click OK to apply this effect. Return to the appearance panel and let's duplicate this fill, focus on this new fill and open the existing drop shadow effect. You need to increase the opacity by 10% and cut the offset and blur values in half. Click OK to apply these new settings. Reselect the top fill and again duplicate it. 
open the drop shadow effect that's applied for this new fill and again let's increase the opacity by 10 percent and cut the offset and blur values in half click ok return to the appearance palette to duplicate the top fill open the drop shadow effect that's applied for this new fill and start by replacing the color with white lower the opacity to 20 percent Set the offset values to minus 4 and minus 8. Also increase the blur to 8 pixels. Click OK to apply this new effect. Reselect your top fill and duplicate it. Open the existing drop shadow effect and again let's increase the opacity by 10% and cut the offset and blur values in half. Click OK. One more time select the top fill and duplicate it. Open this drop shadow effect, increase the opacity by 10% and cut the offset and blur values in half. Click OK to apply this final effect. Let's move to the stroke and drag it below the fills. Keep it selected. Just apply your scatter brush and replace this color with 220, 182 and 137. Lower the opacity of the stroke to 25% and change the blending mode to multiply. And then move to the layers panel to drag this text between your two groups. Press again Ctrl and F to add one more copy of this white text. And among other things, you'll need some built in bristle brushes. To get access to those bristle brushes, you need to open the flyer menu from the brushes panel. Go to Open Brush Library, Bristle Brush, and Bristle Brush Library. From this pack, you'll only need this map brush, so click it to add it inside the brushes panel. Let's do the same for this fan brush, and then you can close this panel. Make sure that your white text is still selected. Let's select the fill and remove the current text color. Click this button to add a new stroke for your text. Keep it selected. First of all, apply this map brush. Increase the stroke weight to 2 points. Replace this color with 237, 213, and 171. Also, lower the opacity of this stroke to 15%. And then you need to add a second stroke using this same button. This time, you need to apply this fan brush. Replace the color with 255. 242 and 191 and don't forget to lower the opacity of this stroke to 30%. Let's add one more stroke for the selected text. Increase the weight to 5 points. Apply a linear gradient. Simply click and drag these gradient sliders to remove them. Double click this gradient slider and let's replace the color with 220, 182, and 137. Remember to increase the opacity back to 100%, and then move to this other gradient slider. First of all, increase the opacity to 50%, and then double click it to replace this color with 250, 242, and 191. Now return to the appearance panel to lower the opacity of the stroke to 80%. And then go to Effect, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 4 pixels. Click OK to apply this effect. And let's add one more stroke using this same button. Apply your scatter brush and replace the linear gradient with a flat color. Make it 220, 182, and 137. Lower the stroke weight to 0.25. Also lower the opacity to 75% and change the blending mode to overlay. Now go to Effect, Path, and Offset Path. Set the offset to minus 12 pixels. Click OK to apply this first effect. Reselect your top stroke and let's apply a roughen E effect. Check both of these boxes, set the size to 10 and the detail to 30.
click OK to apply the second effect. And once you're done, you can lock your two pieces of text, unlock this group and open it. And we'll edit some of these sand shapes to turn them into sea waves. Let's start with this rectangle, select it and focus on the appearance panel. Start by selecting the fill and replace this color with 126, 218 and 223. You can also drag this color inside the swatches panel to save it because you'll need it again later. Let's open the Gaussian blur effect that's already applied for this fill and just increase the radius to 4 pixels. Click OK to apply this new effect. Let's select the stroke and add a new one on top of it. Replace this linear gradient with your saved color. Apply the scatter brush from the brushes panel. Lower the stroke weight to 0 0.5 and then duplicate the stroke using this same button. Let's focus on this new stroke and first of all increase the weight to 1 point. And then don't forget to lower the opacity to 50%. Keep this stroke selected and let's add a new one on top of it. Keep this stroke color but increase the weight to 5 points and select profile number 1 from this list. And then go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Zigzag. Check both of these boxes, set the size to 3 and the number of ridges per segment to 6. Click OK to apply this first effect. Make sure that your top stroke is still selected and let's go again to Effect but this time to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 3 pixels, click OK to apply this blur, return to the appearance panel to select this top stroke and add a new one on top of it. This one should have the color set to white, so let's change it. Apply your scatter brush, lower the opacity to 30% and then go to Effect, Path, and offset that. Set the offset to 8 pixels. Click OK to apply this effect and then reselect this stroke to duplicate it. Let's focus on this new stroke and first of all increase the opacity to 40%. Also lower the stroke weight to 0.5 and don't forget to open the offset path effect that's already applied and lower the offset to 6 pixels. Click OK to apply this new setting, move to the bottom of the appearance panel and let's add a new fill, drag it below the existing fill, keep it selected and replace the color with white and then apply a Gaussian blur effect. Set the radius to 4 pixels, click OK to apply this blur, make sure that your white fill is still selected and let's go again to effect. This time to Distort and Transform and Transform. Just drag this Move Vertical slider to minus 5 pixels, which will move your white fill 5 pixels up. Click OK to apply this effect. And let's add one more stroke between your two fills. Keep it selected. Lower the width to 5 points and replace the color with white. And then go to Effect, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to 8 pixels. Click OK to apply this first effect. Make sure that this white stroke stays selected and let's apply a rough on effect. Again, check both of these boxes. Set the size and the detail to 5. Click OK to apply this second effect. And let's continue with a Gaussian blur effect. Set the radius to only 5 pixels. Click OK to apply this blur, move to the layers panel to select this other rectangle and return to the appearance panel. Start again by selecting the fill to replace this color with 83, 177 and 203. You can double click this color code and press Ctrl C to copy it because you'll need this color later. Let's also open this Gaussian Blur effect and increase the radius to 4 pixels and then select the top stroke to add a new one on top of it. Keep it selected. First of all, replace this linear gradient with a flat color. 
Now you can double click this color code and press Ctrl V to paste that color that you used for the fill. Keep the stroke weight set to 5 points, but don't forget to select profile number 1 from this list. And when you're done, go to Effect, Restore and Transform and Zigzag. Check both of these boxes, set both of these values to 4. Click OK to apply this first effect. Make sure that this top stroke is still selected and let's also apply a Gaussian Blur E effect. Set the radius to 5 pixels. Click OK to apply this second effect and let's add one more stroke on top of the existing ones. Change the color of this final stroke to white. Apply your scatter brush. Lower the opacity to 40% and set the stroke weight to only 0.5. Now you can hold down the control key and click outside your selection to deselect it. You can even close this group and lock it. And for the final touch, we need to make a small correction to the text because we forgot to set the correct angle for a gradient which we applied on a stroke. So let's unlock this text, select it and select just this stroke. And you need to make sure that the angle is set to 90 degrees to get this nice highlight on the top of the text. With this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.